All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem using the principle of work and energy for a pendulum. So this would be kind of like an introductory example problem. And what I'm given to me here is I have a pendulum that has a mass of 0.1 kilograms. And the pendulum, the length of the pendulum is 0.5 meters like that and I am going to release it from rest at theta equals zero degrees and I would like to know what is the speed of the mass or the particle at theta equals 90 degrees and we would like to know the tension in the cord right here and here's what the what the system looks like. So here is my schematic. All right, and so it's released from rest at theta equals zero degrees, and then we want to know. We'll say theta is moving in this direction here. Like this we'd like to find the velocity of the particle when theta equals ninety, which will be the instant when the particle is. So right here, and so this is the schematic. We know that we're, we're released from rest here. This is theta equals zero degrees. And here is when theta equals 90 degrees like this. And we know that here this is experiencing, this is moving on a circular path. And we know because it's released from rest at theta equals zero, the velocity here, the velocity here equals zero. So this will be V1. And what we'd like to know is what is the velocity here, V2? And we'd li also like to know what the tension force is in the cable or the cord as well right here. And we'll call even call that T2 like that. So one thing to do is really when we analyze this problem, we have like a beginning and an end. And really what we want to do is determine kind of the forces and, and apply kind of the concepts from the equation of motion in, in the intermediate, within, in between. So at some intermediate angle, I'd like to draw my free body diagram right here. So somewhere along the path, some intermediate path here. So I'll, I'll just choose some this point right there, this, and you know, normally, moving on a circular path really screams to us, hey, let's use NT components. And so I know that this would be my positive tangential direction towards the direction of increasing path. And this, in this direction right here, towards the center of curvature would be my positive normal component. And I, I wanna draw what, what are the forces acting on the particle in between. I've got the weight of the particle here, which I can draw, boom, like this. And then I've got the tension force from the cord acting on the particle, which I can draw like that, the T right there. I would probably have like what I would normally do if I'm just using NT components, and you can solve this problem using only NT components. I would draw the inertial term, copy, paste. I would draw the inertial diagram here, and it would have the same directions here. This would be N, N plus T, like that, this. And I would have my MAN, my normal component, my inertial direction, uh, my normal, my inertial term in the normal direction, MAN, and my inertial term in the tangential direction, which I call MAT, like this, all right? And um, you know, you probably wanna resolve some geometry here, so I see this angle theta, so if I'm looking at things in terms of the angle theta, I know this is also the angle theta because of the parallel line here and here because of these two parallel lines. And so then I know between the normal and the tangential component, I have 90. So this alternate angle is 90 minus theta, and this angle is also theta like that. And that should help you uh, resolve some stuff. And so now you might be asking, okay, well, when do I apply the principle of work and energy? Well, so just to just because this is an introductory example, I want to make sure we go through this kind of like step by step here. And so really, you know, we may look at this thing and say, okay, if I'm using the equations of motion, I would say apply equations of motion here. And I would write out the equations for some of the forces in the n direction equals ma n 
and the positive is this direction right here as a function of theta and then in the tangential direction here some the positive direction would be here some of the forces in t equals m a t all right but we can write these equations of motion and in here in the normal direction if i look at the normal direction here in the normal component i would have t minus m g sine theta is equal to m a n like that all right which we could substitute the normal component as the velocity v squared over the radius of curvature, which in this case is the length of the chord. All right. In the tangential direction, we would write w or mg cosine theta is equal to m at. So this is my equation of motion in the tangential direction right there. Now I could choose to proceed. There's going to be an integration involved and a, and a substitution using, we probably recall this V dV over dS. I'm going to make that substitution and then set up an integral where I use dS equals rho d theta. And rho is the same as L in this case. But we know all this was done using the principle of work and energy. So instead of doing this integration, I could choose to use the principle of work and energy. So PWE instead of the tangential component. If I choose to apply PWE, this would be T1 plus the work of all the forces from 1 to 2 equals T2. All right, all right, all right. And these are scalar quantities, so I really don't have to worry about the direction or the angle. And I know that here, initially at one, this I'll call stage one, this I'll call stage two, like this. Well, I've got, hmm, I've got no velocity. So my kinetic energy at one here, this T1, is 1 half m v1 squared. I have no velocity because it starts to release from rest. So this is 0, ao. And then t2. And then here, oh, don't get confused by the i, by the notation. Ugh. But it's all good. The kinetic energy at 2 here, t2, the kinetic energy, i, notation, notation. T2, we'll say K, the kinetic energy here is 1 half mv2 squared. 1 half mv2 squared, like this. Hmm, I see, I see, I see. Let's get rid of that. That is confusing. All right, and we'll call that T at theta equals 90 degrees, like this. All right, and so here's my kinetic energy, T2, 1 half mv2 squared, and, I, and really this v2 is this unknown that I'm trying to solve for in this problem. And so and when I go ahead and I apply the principle of work and energy, I would have 0 plus the sum of all the work from 1 to 2 is 1 half mv2 squared, like this. So then the last thing I need to figure out is what is the work? What is the work done by all the forces acting on the particle between 1 and 2? Well, here, the only forces acting on my particle are the, te are the tension force due to, from the cord and the weight of the particle. And so if I look here, the tension force is perpendicular to the path. And any force that's perpendicular to the path does no work. That's like that non-committal group member you have in your lab team. <laughs> Anyway, all right, and so the work of the tension force is equal to zero because it's perpendicular to the path. The work of weight of the particle is just the force times the distance, or W times the change in height, delta Y, right here. And so when I look here, the change in height from here to here is straight up 0.5 meters. This is 0.5 meters. And I don't try to memorize like positive and negative signs. I just know that the weight, this weight force is in the same direction as the direction of motion. Therefore, the work of the weight is positive. And this would be mg 
delta y or in this case l which is 0.5 meters all right and so now i put it all together and the principle of work and energy here this would be let's see my only work is the work due to weight so the work from one to two is m g l and this is equal to one half m v two squared and the mass is cancel and i get this very popular equation square root of two g l and in fact i bet some of you have memorized pendulum equations that show this right here and this velocity at two then is 3.13 meters per second is my velocity at two right here Okay. Notice we have a, a scalar quantity. It's it's a speed at at 90 degrees. All right. So we have a value at that instant right there. And to determine the tension force in the cable or the cord at theta equals 90, I just got to use my sum of the forces in the normal direction at theta equals 90 degrees. So here. I say boom right here paste this right here so I'm interested at theta equals 90 so I'm gonna substitute for theta equals 90 degrees here so I got to put 90 degrees here and so the velocity at 90 degrees is equal to this v2 value that we got earlier which was this 3.13 meters per second and so now it's just a series of plugging and chugging so the tension force at theta equals 90 degrees is equal to well let's see mg sine of 90 is 1 so mg plus plus mv2 squared over the length of the cable which here in this case would be we have a 0.5 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared plus 0.5 kilograms times 3.13 meters per second quantity squared divided by 0.5 meters. And the tension force in the cable at theta equals 90 degrees is 2.94 newtons. Boom, right there. And what's interesting is, look at, check this out. You know, this term right here, this mv squared over rho, or L in this case, is kind of the additional force provided due to the dynamics of this problem, right? If, if we were a static condition at theta equals 90, it would just be mg. All right, so hopefully that was a nice introductory example. Let me know if you have any questions. Take it easy. Structure free.